Hello and welcome to End on a Make, where today I wanted to switch it up and do something a little different because today is tip-off for the 25th season of the WNBA. Uh, there's been a lot of hype building for this season in particular. Last year's WNBA bubble was a huge success and showed a bigger interest, uh, larger ratings, and it seemed like there was a, a renewed popularity in the sport. And so now with the 25th anniversary, they're hoping to continue that momentum. We saw unbelievable jerseys designed and announced for all 12 teams. Uh, each team got three new jerseys that are absolutely incredible, pretty much from top to bottom. And they're hoping to just continue that popularity to a, a bigger season, a more successful season than ever. So since that's tipping off today, and since people seem to be, you know, ready for it to start, eagerly waiting for it to start, and in the hopes of keeping up that momentum, I wanted to hop on here and just kind of talk about a couple of the things that, that I'm really looking forward to for this WNBA season. Um, and first up, it has to be the Atlanta Dream. Um, <laughs> to say that they were an organization in turmoil in recent years uh, is a bit of an understatement. They had Kelly Leffler as their old team owner, who was a former senator in Georgia, who the team was like actively campaigning against in the WNBA bubble. They kind of organized the entire league in in protest and in in running against her and and, and promoting uh, Raphael Warnock, who ended up displacing her from the Senate. And now they have new ownership uh, after Leffler sold to a group that includes former WNBA champion Renee Montgomery, who has kind of promised, you know, sweeping reforms to the team. I heard her say that the team didn't have, like, training tables and, like, food for after practices la as, as late as last year. So there's a ton of stuff that she's working to turn the culture around that that new ownership group is looking to. But on court, I think they're going to be a really exciting team to watch as well. So this year they drafted Ari McDonald out of Arizona, fresh off of an unbelievable run in the WNBA tournament or the NCAA women's tournament, where she led Arizona to the title game, where they came up just short. Um, and they took Kennedy Carter in the top five last year. So they have two top five guards that they're going to kind of redesign their offense around. And I think that that's going to lead to a very up-tempo, fast-paced game style. And I think anytime you hear the phrase up-tempo in any sport, you can be relatively <laughs> excited about what you're going to get to see. I think Ari McDonald's uh, playmaking abilities and off-ball abilities are going to blend really well together with Kennedy and with the rest of the team. And I'm expecting to see a lot of up-and-down, fast-paced gameplay. And I think that that's... You know, that's a super exciting dynamic to, to watch. And a lot of the complaints about the WNBA usually are like, oh, the scores are, aren't as high as NBA games and it's not as exciting. And it's not. And I think the dream are going to be one of those teams that is absolutely leading the way to dispel that rumor and dispel that stereotype here. Uh, then there's the Dallas Wings, who had an unprecedented three of the top five picks in this year's draft including number one and number two. And I'm just excited to see how that plays out. I'm excited to see what all of that, because that's essentially like a starting lineup rebuild. Um, and I'm really excited to see what that looks like. I think that Charlie Collier, who is the number one pick uh, straight out of Texas, I think she's going to step right in and be a dominant force uh, at the center position. She's got all the size and skill that you would want in a center. And I really think that that's going to give her, you know, a lot of chances to just bully inside the paint. I think they'll probably run an inside out game with her, making sure that she kind of can facilitate the offense as needed. And I'm really excited to see it. They have guard Chelsea Dundee or Dungy, sorry. They have a uh, rookie guard that they took with the fifth pick. And then they have their Swedish player, a walk cure who is actually designated for suspension right now, just because they have so many players. So it's crazy that a number two overall pick is probably not going to be with the team to start the season or on the on like on the court I should say to start the season and that just kind of speaks to this this bounty of of talent that this team has and you know youth and and excitement isn't always immediately translatable to success but it is exciting to watch young teams figure it out and I think that you know to give an NBA counterpart like fans that are really excited to watch teams like the Hornets or the Hawks that play fast and are learning. Um, I think it's, you know, it's a good, 
I think it's a good parallel. I think people are going to watch Dallas and be excited to see these young players continue to develop and grow their skills. Uh, the next one on my mind is the Las Vegas Aces, who have the reigning MVP, Asia Wilson. They're bringing back uh, Kelsey Plum from injury last year, who missed all of last season. And, you know, even without her, they were still in the WNBA Finals. They came up just short to the storm, but it's still going to be really exciting to see. And it does it does hurt to mention that the Aces will be without Angel McCautry, who suffered a knee injury, tore her ACL in a preseason game last week. And that sucks because she's a veteran presence. She was their leading scorer uh, through most of last season, helped carry them in the playoffs. And it's going to be a bummer to not see her on the court because she's someone who really took to heart, you know, champion championing for change and for representation um she was huge throughout all of the protests and through giving a voice to a lot of the players and like that type of leadership on and off the court is something that the team's going to miss so that is the one drawback um i will just say hopefully she can get a full recovery and we can see her back on the court next season because it will not be the same without her out there uh then there's the champs there's the seattle storm they have sue bird they have brianna stewart they they just dominated the WNBA Finals last year. They're sure to be top contenders again this year because that's the talent that they have. And I'm mostly just excited to see them pick up where they left off. Uh, Brianna Stewart went and played overseas and basically won like five more championships and MVP trophies after winning WNBA Finals MVP. So it looks like they're going to probably just pick up where they left off with her continuing to ascend to be you know one of if not the top player in the league i think she's gonna be a sneaky contender for mvp this year not really sneaky because it's brianna stewart but i think she'll probably be someone to watch the entire season long and as long as we can see sue bird continue to perform uh i think we got to take the chance we have or take the opportunity we got to appreciate the greatness while we can uh same thing goes for the phoenix mercury and diana tarasi uh, she absolutely is, as far as I'm concerned, um, one of the goats of the sport, along with Sue Bird and along with someone I will get to after that. And so I think, you know, appreciating these these veteran players while we can is a huge thing. Uh, the other player veteran that I wanted to talk about was Candace Parker, who is making the move from the Los Angeles Sparks to her hometown, Chicago Sky. And as someone based in L.A., that sucks because... You know, I'm in L.A. I would like to see the L.A. teams do well. But I think her on her hometown team is going to revitalize that city. It's going to revitalize the team and the attention around the team. And I think it pairs off to be, you know, to make them pretty, pretty competitive right out of the gate. I think she'll continue to play at the high level we all expect her to. And selfishly, too, it'll be good to see her on court after, you know, such a successful run on TNT doing all the commentary and, and analyst uh, analyst spots for them throughout the NBA season. So it'll be cool to see her back on the court after getting to see that side of her throughout the NBA season. And I think she just she instantly elevates the overall ceiling of that team. And then the last team that I'm really excited about and really want to see is the New York Liberty. And that's 100% because I really, really love watching Sabrina Ionescu play basketball. She had a strong start to her rookie year last year after being the number one overall pick for the Liberty, only to go out with a severe grade three ankle sprain, uh, only like three games in, like two and a half games in, I'll say even. And she missed the rest of the season after that in the WNBA level. And it was a bummer because she was kind of exactly what would have been advertised, which is instant excitement, offense, playmaking uh, straight out of the gate. So to not have that was a bummer. The Liberty ended up. Um, with the worst record in the WNBA last season, and they're looking to build off of that now. Uh, they traded back from their pick to get the seventh pick, and I'm just hoping to see a healthy season from Sabrina. I'm hoping to see more of what that team can do, and I think that you know their success is going to be one of the few, one of the teams that like if they succeed and they are producing insane highlights every night. We could see a lot more national attention given because, you know, unfortunately with a lot of sports, it is it is dominated by superstars. Uh, so I think you'll see teams like the Dream, the Aces, 
the storm, the Liberty kind of dominate those headlines. But at the same time, I think teams like the sky and the Dallas wings will also have a strong ability, you know, will be must not must see, but there'll be some teams that fans will enjoy watching. And then last, last thing too, I was, I keep saying that, but last thing is uh, the Washington mystics get Elena Del Don back. And that's going to be awesome. I, I missed seeing her last year. She had, you know, all sorts of concerns as far as, as COVID was medically. And I'm hoping for nothing but complete health and, and to see her continue to play at a high level because her impact on that team is, is undeniable. They were a championship caliber team when she was there and last year they were not. So I'm hoping she can step right back in and we can see, you know, yet another star in the league shine and play at the highest possible level. Uh, that's that's what I'm excited about. Uh, please um, let me know in the comments what you were excited for. The season tips off today. There's games running all weekend, um, and I can't wait. So check it out. Let me know what you think, what your thoughts are, who your players to watch are, and I will be back soon. Thank you.